So you've seen some fantastic technology so far this morning, but let's face it, how do users experience it? They experience it through building applications. Building applications with our APIs, building applications with our templates and our builders. The easiest way to start building apps is with our templates and builders. Our users are doing it all the time. In fact, in the last year, over half a million applications have been built and shared on ArcGIS Online alone. So we know this is a very successful paradigm. But it's not just for end users. It's for you as developers as well. So what I'd like to do is hand over to Kelly, and she's going to take us through some demonstrations on how you as developers can make use of templates. Kelly. Thanks, Ewan. The configurable apps are a popular way to create apps that present information, tell stories, collect citizen feedback, and much more. We've introduced some new capabilities that allow you as developers to customize the hosted apps. The first is based on feedback that we heard from you, that you want all the apps created within your gallery to have a consistent look and feel. So we added the ability for org administrators to define what we call a shared theme. This lets them specify a color palette and logo that will be applied to your configurable apps during the configuration process. So here's an example of this in a gallery where all of the apps created have a consistent look and feel that matches your organization branding. The next option that's available in some configurable apps is that you can insert CSS into the hosted app to change its appearance. So this is the time-aware configurable template. Ben Flanagan of Esri UK created some custom CSS to modify the look of this app. He pasted it into the custom CSS text box and once he does so, you have an app with a slightly different look and feel, more transparent backgrounds, and a slightly different look for the time slider. The source code for all of the configurable apps is available on GitHub for you to download and customize. We also provide something called an application boilerplate that can be used as the starting point for you to create your own apps that will live in your organization's template gallery. This app is a great place to start because it contains all the logic for making your application an application that can live in that gallery and work with the ArcGIS Online content. Here's an example of a simple app that we've created using the boilerplate. It lets you search the web map contents and presents information about that specific data. To get this into the gallery, we need to create an item in ArcGIS Online specify the URL to our custom app, and define some configuration parameters. These are things that your users can modify about the app. Once you've done that, you share it to a group, and then go into the organization administration settings and specify that group as the custom template gallery group. Optionally, you can check the box to add the Esri out-of-the-box applications to that group as well. Once you've done that, you'll see your custom search app is in the gallery alongside the Esri out-of-the-box applications, so users within your organization can select that as one of the options. Once they've done so, they can configure it. Here we specify a search layer and the fields that we want to search. If your organization has shared theming applied, those shared themes will also, colors will also appear here on the panel and can be applied to the application. So here's our final product. Again, we can search contents in our web map. Let's look for a congressman. We'll pick Adam Smith, and we can see where the next town hall is. Back to you, Ewan. Thank you very much, Kelly. So templates can be used to build very focused applications, but more importantly for you as developers, you can empower your end users to create their own applications, leaving you more time to work on the API built uh, apps that you also are responsible for. So these are focused applications, but we still have technology for working on builders. And builders pull together widgets and allow you to do a little bit more reconfiguration at application creation time to build more focused applications from component parts. So to show us how that's done, I'd like to introduce Julie, and she's going to take you through App Builders.
Thanks, Ewan. Good morning, everyone. Web App Builder is a tool that allows you to build 2D and 3D web applications with the tooling and styling of your choice. I'm going to give you a lightning quick tour of how you can create a brand new hosted web application in ArcGIS Online. Now, I'm going to start with my Fire Hydrant analysis web scene. And this web scene is going to allow me to explore the buildings and the fire hydrants around those buildings, and in case of a fire, kind of see how much water would be available. So the first thing I can do is select the layout of my application and a color scheme, and then brand it with my organization's logo, so fire services. Next, I would just pick the tools that I need for my app and then configure it against my data. Now, since you're all developers, I'd like to switch the focus over to the Developer Edition. Now, Developer Edition is a vehicle for you to, to deliver your custom capabilities to your users. Essentially, you download the Developer Edition, integrate your custom widgets and themes, and then you're going to build your apps and deploy them to your own web server. So I've already in downloaded and installed Web App Builder. And here I can create a brand new application or continue where I left off with that online app we just started. So as you'll see, I have the same experience that I had in online. Only now, if I have a custom theme, I can select that. Or if I have a custom widget, I can integrate them here. So I'd like to show you how I can add a custom widget to the builder. This is my custom widget called Asset Proximity. And inside it, you'll see the typical things you'd expect for a web app. JSON, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, images. And to add that to my builder, I just copy it and then paste it into the builder's widget directory. Once I do that, my widget is a first-class citizen. It shows up with the other out-of-box widgets. And I have full control over the whole configuration experience for my users to use my widget. So in my case, I want to select a building find the fire hydrants around that building, and then look at it by groups by the size of the main that connects to that fire hydrant, and then summarize the gallons per minute for each of those fire hydrants. Now it's been added to my application, and I can go ahead and test it out, select a building, explore the different distances around that building, and then the different fire hydrants summarized by their gallons per minute. Now that's pretty cool, but actually, Web App Builder is built on the JavaScript API. So that means you can build in any capability from the API into your widget. But the best thing about building widgets is that you don't have to build all of the applications for your users. You can essentially share your widget, and then they can build their own apps with your tools. So for example, someone in the parks department might want to explore the trees around a building, and then look at the different tree species. And essentially, they're just they're just configuring your widget against their data. Now, there's a very strong developer community that works on Web App Builder. In fact, the, the users are the ones that created this group. So you can join it, join the conversation, interact with them, and start building with Web App Builder. Now, we've just covered how you can create web apps with templates and builders. Now I'd like to shift the focus over doing the same thing for native apps. App Studio for ArcGIS allows you to build a single application, test it, and deploy it to any app store. To get started, you can simply configure one of our out-of-box templates. Or since you're developers, you can do so much more with the, with the developer edition. So here I have the developer edition installed. And to get started, I can simply use one of the templates or a sample. Maybe there's a particular capability I want to use or even use an enterprise template. So you have all of the code for Survey123 to get started with your app. I'd like to show you an application that was built for Allegheny County. This app allows me to select a park, and then pick a trail I might want to hike, and then look at some statistics like the distance and the difficulty, have a look at the elevation profile. Now, App Studio is built on QML and the Qt runtime. So I'd like to show you what the code looks like for this application. Now, this is Qt Creator, and this is the IDE used for QML development. A lot of you may not be familiar with QML, but if you look closely, the scripting language is just JavaScript. And then the UI layout is defined with a, with a JSON-like syntax. As you can see here, rather than using services, I'm using all offline data. And that's because you're using the full power of the runtime. So anything you can do in the runtime, you can bring into your App Studio application. So here you can see I'm using all offline data. 
Now, the challenge sometimes with building cross-platform apps is that you have to work with multiple compilers, you have to deal with multiple platforms, and App Studio solves that with something called CloudMake. What CloudMake enables you, allows you to do is select the platforms you want to support, you can upload your project, and then it builds an executable for each of those platforms you want to support. So the only thing left to do is then publish your app to the App Store. And actually, if anyone's going to Allegheny County, this thing's already out there. You can do some hiking. So I hope what I've shown you is that App Studio is a one-stop shop for developing a single code base, testing it, and deploying it to any App Store. Are you guys convinced? Yes? OK. <laughs> Thanks. Back to you. Thanks, Julie. OK, so that's our templates and builders. Now let's go in and have a look at the APIs. We're going to start with JavaScript. JavaScript 4.3 was just released last week. It has some drawing and performance improvements. Jeremy showed you these this morning. Feature layer editing is included with this release. It's got a whole host of new widgets, and you can also filter and query uh, scenes. So what I'd like to do is actually introduce Rene from the JavaScript development team, and he's going to step us through a number of demos that shows this new API at work. Rene. Thank you, Ewan. So when you're building apps with the JavaScript API, your first resource is probably going to be the documentation. So with this release, we've gone through a lot of trouble to completely rewrite the documentation to make it easier for you to find the information you need when you need it. You can see a sample of that when you look at the API reference. So there's a lot of modules inside the JavaScript API. You shouldn't be expected to know all of them, but at least have an idea of how to find them. And you can do that by just using the search tool. So if I want to learn how to use the new point cloud layer that's available in the API, I can start typing that in, and I'll be able to see an easy reference that I can get to the point cloud layer, take me to that API reference page, and I can learn how to use this inside of my own application. You have the same ability when you look at the sample code. So with every release, we're adding more samples into the API. And if you want to find out how to do something that's new, you can quickly search for that in here. So for example, I want to find out how to use the new uh, filter and querying in the scene layer, I can type that in there, and it's going to take me directly to the results. I can just click on the sample, open it up, and learn how to use it. And we also have a lot of out-of-the-box widgets built into the API. So you shouldn't be expected to build everything from scratch. We don't want you to reinvent the wheel. So you can uh, freely use all the out-of-the-box widgets that we have, and we keep adding more with every release. So this guide page goes through and shows you how you can quickly use some of the widgets, in this case, the base map toggle. Essentially, you want to create a map, you create the view, and the APIs for all the widgets are almost the same. You're going to instantiate a widget, give it the view, and maybe some other options that might be specific for that widget. Once you do that, you're just going to add that to the view UI or maybe to your own UI. So I have a small sample here. These are uh, most of the out-of-the-box widgets that we currently have including the scale bar. Um, in this case, I am using the new expand widget that we have. So I can minimize most of my widgets when they're not in use. So I can go ahead and click on the search widget button here. It's going to open up the search widget. I have another expand button for print, for base map toggle, another one for the legend, and then another one for the layer list widget. So it's an easy way for you to kind of build your applications pretty quickly, get them up and running, without I'll have to do a lot of customized code on your own that you don't need to do. Now, if you want, you can also uh, extend the widgets a little bit. We add some uh, extensibility in here that allows you to do things like add custom actions. So in this sample here, I have the layerless widget. I'm going to add this layerless widget, and there's a function on there called create actions function. Inside of there, I can create custom buttons that are going to get added to the layer item that's in my layer list. And every time I click on those buttons, I can do something. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have a, oh, I won't slow down. Actually, these, every time I click on one of these buttons, it would update the renderer for me in every single case. Now, if you want to learn how to use the build widgets the way that we build widgets, we actually provide a guide page on custom widget development. So you can go through this whole guide page. You can see how we are building our widgets currently. And right now, we're using TypeScript for most of our development in version 4 of the API. So when you're building the widgets, you're going to want to use TypeScript for all the functionality that we have. Now, we realize that most developers may not be using TypeScript or know how to set up a TypeScript environment. 
So we've also added a guide page for that as well. This guide page is going to go through the steps you need, show you how to install the typings for the ArcGIS API for JavaScript, as well as how to set the configuration to compile your project. And to get you started, we have a project on GitHub that has a sample application you can use to get up and running pretty quickly using TypeScript. Now, if you're currently in a development shop that is using other frameworks other than the JavaScript API and you want to integrate the JavaScript API into your workflows, we have a guide page on using some of the most popular frameworks that are out there. So on this guide page, you're going to find information about how you can integrate the API with those frameworks, um, use them in an existing application. And we also have a GitHub page that goes into more detail on integrating the JavaScript API into maybe an existing application using one of these frameworks. Now, we have a lot of sessions going on this week on the JavaScript API. So if you're interested in learning more about JavaScript API, we have a session in here after lunch at 1 o'clock that is going to uh, called Inside Scoop that's going to cover uh, all the sessions we have available to help you choose what you might want to see. Thank you. Thanks, Renee. So the ArcGIS JavaScript API, the 4.0 version, or the 4x version, is in very active development. And there's a number of releases, three more plans for later this year. You'll see by the end of the year, almost all of the functionality that was available in our 3x technology will be now fully supported in our 4x technology. And we really think this is the year that you'll be able to start transferring your applications that you've been building for many years on top of 3x to 4x. We're very confident because we'll be doing exactly the same thing at Esri, transferring our applications over to this newer platform.